Thank you. You're, you're so right. Uh, what a nice crowd. Thank you for coming tonight. By the way, did you know you can write this off? This trip out here as, as a religious pilgrimage? This is my kind of crowd this time of day. Nowhere to go. Be honest, how many of you had nothing to do? Say, so let's go see the Tonight Show. Well, well, well. Hey, baby. Looks like a gay bag lady. <laughs> What do you do? Just keep putting things on so you say, hey, I'm done. <laughs> put on a t-shirt and then put on... That's what's called the layered look, right? Yeah. I went by Hoopy Goldberg's house and she did this. <laughs> it looks pretty good. And you got your... Got it's your, nice. Got it's your sneaks on? Yeah, the old yeah. Reebok is there to give oh, me a quick well, getaway if I need it. A couple of more free boxes, obviously. <laughs> You make up for last night. I can tell the moment you walk in, I listened to Ed before the show. Last night was kind of a rough crowd. Yeah. I found out today they, they had turned up in an old photograph with Kurt Waldheim. <laughs> <laughs> and I normally don't like to comment on audiences that were here the night before, but wouldn't you say that last night's audience was... A little different. I don't want to say that they were... Tough. Dumb, but... <laughs> they were dumb. After the show, I found out they said in a live bait store before two hours before they realized it wasn't Benny Hanna's. <laughs> now, I know a lot of you from out of town, right? Yeah. You, okay. <laughs> time to time, I like to recommend uh, some things here in Burbank. I've talked, uh, that's right. I've talked about Burbank's famed restaurant row. You don't have to go into Sunset Boulevard or La Cienega. We have a lot of great places out here. There's a new Jewish-Mexican restaurant, <laughs> Casa de Nasher. <laughs> you go in there and you don't hit the pinata with a stick. You nag it until it has a breakdown. <laughs> enjoy this too what the hell <laughs> and my favorite italian restaurant vinnie abruzzi's little touch of newark uh, i'll be honest with you it's a it's a tough joint the menu have you been there no the menu has pictures of different dishes with hats over them <laughs> vinnie's now has home delivery really they throw a chicken from a moving car that, and the chicken is bound and gagged <laughs> We also have famous celebrities. Most celebrities live in Bel Air, Beverly Hills, or so forth. We have celebrities here in Burbank. How many of you have heard of Leonard Smeal? <laughs> <laughs> this guy will go along with anything. Yeah, yeah. I heard of him. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Leonard Smeal invented the pedestrian crosswalk button that's not hooked up to anything. <laughs> Do you know that thing where it says yeah, press? Yeah. Not Nothing. hooked up to anything. You just <laughs> psychologically. <laughs> you know why you're in a good mood tonight? It's June. Yeah. This is a romance. A lot of women get married this right. time of year. June yeah. brides. Uh, <laughs> 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 high school graduations, right? Right. Prom prom nights. Yeah. Do you remember your high school prom? Absolutely. Yeah. Sure. You remember who you took? Yep. Who'd you take? Lois Ryan. Lois Ryan. Yeah. You ever hear from Lois? No. I'm just asking. It's, no. it's interesting. People, who'd you take to your high school prom? My ex-wife. <laughs> <laughs> Yvonne. 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 You say that's interesting. I get nostalgic this time of year. I don't know what it is. It's, I hark back to my youth on the plains of Nebraska. And now most people don't know this. They think because you're an entertainer that you are outgoing. I'm very. Wouldn't you say I'm shy? Very shy. Now, when I was a teenager, I was real shy, and I've never forgotten my very first <laughs> sexual experience. Uh oh. It was in the back seat of a car on a beautiful moonlit night, and it was then I determined to try it with a girl. <laughs> Oh, Sunday, Father's Day, yep. right? Father's Day, Sunday. 
Ronald Reagan just told his kids that they could take him to dinner on Father's Day if they know where to find the food. <laughs> okay, one out of 12 <laughs> can be done. Also, uh, this is a birthday today, I believe. You know who's 65 years old today? Great Britain's Prince Philip. Birthday today, Queen gave him the day off. <laughs> Did you know Prince Philip's horse has a, a bumper sticker that says royalty on board? <laughs> Oh, now, I mentioned last night on, during the monologue that a, there's a little controversy going on because ABC has locked up exclusive television rights, I guess, to the, the big pageant unveiling on Ellis Island, right? Right. Some of the networks uh, are, are kind of steamed, but ABC is really exploiting it. Uh, they have a special on next week. Geraldo Rivera. <laughs> breaks into the Statue of Liberty's underwear. <laughs> How many of you have watched the Senate? They start televising the Senate hearings on C-SPAN. Have any of you watched it? <laughs> Apparently, Senate Majority Leader Bob Dole said today it's, it's laying a bomb, because yeah. he said it was supposed to be exciting, and it's pretty boring. You know what they should do? Get Monty Hall in there. <laughs> Give away washers and dryers or something yeah. like that. Here's the weird item of the day, right here in Hollywood. It was in the news last night. Some thieves apparently tunneled through a hundred feet of dirt and concrete into the vault of a Hollywood bank. Now, please ask them why they did it. It was a hundred feet of concrete and dirt. They said it was faster than standing in the express line. <laughs> there you go. We have a good show for you tonight. Genuinely creative, funny guy tonight, Mr. Billy Crystal. With his. Yeah. Yeah. And Mr. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh. He is... I saw him backstage. He looks sensational. He's an imposing looking and strong. This morning he got up and clean and jerked Raymond Burr. <laughs> Also, a very clever close-up magician who has won many, many awards. Michael Amar is with us tonight. So here we are, and we'll be here. Thank you, Doctor. Doc Severinsen, the great NBC officer. Last week, the C-SPAN cable network began broadcasting live television coverage of the United States Senate in action. Now, there are some who feel that these broadcasts will affect members of the Senate who know now that they're going to make a speech their way on television. We take you live to the Senate, where a prominent member of that legislative body is about to be introduced. The Senate will come to order. To continue our discussion of hunger in America, the chair recognizes the senior senator from South Carolina. <laughs> Mr. Vice President, Mr. Majority Leader, my fellow senators, and home viewers, Many of you have the impression that there's hunger in America. I have an impression, and it goes something like this. You dirty rats. <laughs> you gave it to my brother, and now I'm gonna give it to you. <laughs> but seriously, Senate, <laughs> we've got a great session for you today. Before I begin, I have an important word for all you lobbyists out there. While you're in the lobby, pick me up some buttered popcorn and a box of raisinets. <laughs> Which brings me to the bill I was discussing with my fellow senators at lunch today. I said I don't think we should split that bill four ways because I didn't have the soup. <laughs> but seriously, speaking of food, unless we meet the needs of the hungry, the tax reform bill will be a juggling act. 
And if you'd like to see a juggling act, I got one right here. I got these oranges from the senior senator from the great state of Florida. Let me make you feel at home, Senator. Que pasa, que pasa, Fidel Castro. <laughs> I would like to say a word about the Graham-Rudman Act, which is an act Graham and Rudman were caught performing behind the Iwo Jima statue. <laughs> but seriously, my fellow Americans, we cannot live with the current deficit. And speaking of deficits, did you hear the one about the butcher who turned his back on the automatic slicer and Got a little behind in his work? <laughs> but let me tell you, unless we radically change our system of checks and balances, the average American will be unable to stretch a dollar. Unless, of course, it's one of these. <laughs> earlier today, earlier today, we met in a special caucus. <clears throat> you know what a caucus is? It's when you go to the doctor and he says, Turn your head and caucus. Order, order. I'll have a roast beef on rye. Hold the horse ready. <laughs> Just kidding. I believe it was the 16th president of the United States, Abraham Lincoln, who said, why didn't I wear a metal hat? <laughs> but seriously, Senate, we here in the Senate Know not what it means to be poor. We live off the fat of the land. And if you want to live off the fat of the land, I suggest you grow potatoes on Tip O'Neill's love handles. <laughs> the bill I'm introducing today on the floor, if we can get Senator Moynihan off the floor. Rough night last night, huh, Senator? The bill I'm introducing is bipartisan. I'm not sure what bipartisan means. I think it's when a woman is trapped inside a man's body. And that reminds me. Guy walks into a psychiatrist's office and says, Doc, you gotta help me. I feel like I'm a woman trapped inside a man's body. What should I do? The psychiatrist says, wait till dark, then make a break for it. <laughs> but my esteemed colleagues, and I'm pretty esteemed myself, some of us are Democrats and some of us are Republicans. But there's one thing that brings a tear to every senator's eye. That's riding a bicycle without a seat. <laughs> We will now take a roll call. I'll have a prune Danish. <laughs> will the senator kindly yield to the senator from Wyoming? No, I won't yield, but I understand his wife does. <laughs> hey, thank you. You've been a beautiful senator. I'd just like to say that all this will go into the congressional record, and that record will be available from KTEL for only $12.95 on LP or <laughs> And... And if you act now on this great record offer, we'll throw in a copy of Ted Kennedy singing The Two Fat Polka. <laughs> Incidentally, for you folks in the Washington area, I'll be appearing tomorrow at a toxic waste hearing. But enough about my wife's cooking. <laughs> You've been great. Thank you very much. Mr. Speaker, thank you. Very good. Nothing at all. Another very good. Another high tone comedy sketch? Yes. <laughs> no coward would have loved that. Uh, you all know this next gentleman. Very talented, very versatile. Fred seems to be setting the clock. Big yes. hand Fred goes uh, on the minutes, and the little hand goes down. Uh, Billy's co starring in a movie called Running Scared that opens June 27th all across the country. And he's going to be appearing right here in Los Angeles at the Universal Amphitheater, June 29th and 30th. He's got a book coming out this summer called, What Would You Guess? Absolutely Marvelous. Would you welcome Mr. Billy Crystal. You got, thank you. You got, you got more things going here. You got a movie. You're gonna go in concert at the amphitheater. You got a book. You're gonna be in the lobby. We forgot to mention after the show. Selling these. Selling jams and jellies. <laughs> and, well, good to see you. Good to see you. You, you like all this that's happening? It's very exciting. At, at the same time, I'm in the middle of editing an HBO special, yeah. which will be out in August. Super. Yeah. So it's uh, it's exciting to do. Uh, 
free kind of feeling on a cable yeah. show. I bet when you were doing the soap thing, that you didn't think after that ended that it would take off like this, did you? No, because I wasn't in, uh, when I did soap, which uh, yeah. is being rerun now, yeah. it's still as funny as it was back then. Yeah. Uh, I, I never had the chance to do all the things that I always thought I could do. And when you do a show on cable, uh, it can really open things up. And of course, last year on Saturday Night Live. Cable is, is, is great fun, but... Hi, Ed. Hello, Billy. <laughs> did this come uh, in the same box? How could you? Yeah. The, um, <laughs> the... I kid you, darling, that looks the same. I can <laughs> He's going to give that to Doc later so Doc can have another layer on his <laughs> outfit. But the cable is great fun. You got the, the satellite thing? I have a satellite dish. The, the problem with the cable is the guy who comes to install it. I think, and see if you agree, it should be a law that he's required to wear his pants above his hips. I don't... <laughs> there's always a little thing above the belt there. There's just that little... And the shorts don't go up there. They don't go. It's that little... It's a tush. There's a... Yeah. Over a and they stick it right in your face. I'm going to put that box right here. <laughs> Get that out of my house. I'm paying $28.50 to see Beastmaster, not that tush. <laughs> and it's the same guy fixes your phone and puts it in your refrigerator. Yeah. Never forget a face. Just a little, little dump there. <laughs> cable, cable is funny because if you go from channel to channel, you see a lot of religious channels... You see a lot of guys telling you how to get rich, selling courses and tapes, real estate. You ever seen the real estate guys? Yeah. Pitching yeah. everything, you know, they tell you how to do this with no money. You can be broke, you can have a record, you can have absolutely no money, and in a couple of weeks you can have a yacht and so forth. I don't know how that works. Yeah, but, but also men control the cable box. Oh, this becomes a real macho thing, but the box is a terrible invention. They sit there like this. And I went, would you change, what are you doing? I'm editing out the commercials, honey. <laughs> Go cook, this is a man's job. <laughs> But the dish, the di now, you're a sports freak. Yeah, I watch a lot of sports. Now, the, the, the dish is good because if you like getting remote sports, like full contact mahjong from Miami, <laughs> two bam, three crack. Oh, is that loud? You can, you can get that. Cheese hurdling from Yugoslavia is yes, nice. You know, where they there's a the thing called dwarf tossing. What? I swear. Dwarf this, tossing? Yes. Now, like, this is very bizarre. It's big in England, and when I was in Chicago, it's, it's true. Is this midget rat? Is this midgets? Not, it is midgets, little yeah. people. Yeah. They have bouncers. Huge guys who pick up little people and throw them for distance and accuracy, which I thought... Oh. And this is true. This is it. Can you imagine some of the audio outtakes from this? This the sound? <laughs> oh, boy. It's terrible. But... Why have I not caught that? Is this that is a new late thing. at night, late this at night? Yeah. yeah. Well, with also with its with a satellite dish. Because where I live, I have, I don't have cable. I had a yeah. cheap company, Bob's Cable. Bob's Cable. Yeah. Which, we had um, <laughs> death of a salesman with Gabe Kaplan as Willie Loman. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Linda. How are you? Is Biff home? It's not quite. It's a cheap imitation. Yeah, but sure. the wrestling with a satellite dish, you can get. The wrestling from, like, little towns in Texas, where it gets a little severe, and I have that host with the bad tux and the shirts vomiting out of the front, you know, the bad prom thing. So Friday night is a legal alien night. You don't want to miss that. And then this guy in a cat's outfit interrupts, excuse me, Don. We just want to say to the Gomez brothers, that's right, Gomez, if you're watching this, that is, if you stole the TV and you're watching this show, sitting at home in front of your velvet painting collection. <laughs> <laughs> Clowns on velvet. <laughs> I'm serious, Don. Friday night, me and my brother are gonna refry your beans, Gomez. It won't be pretty. <laughs> and then, then, talk about... We mean it. We... Then the, the midgets come out. Then the midget wrestlers come out and run around the place. This is like a Fellini nightmare. They got... Now, midget wrestlers... With all due respect, are the greatest things I've ever seen in my life. This is... That gets you off the hook. No, right these are... <laughs> Do no, the disclaimer I, first. I, I kid then... the little people. Of course you do. But know. they run around the ring. It's like Barbie dolls. They're like so crazy. You ever see that run? It's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna run. It's like... <laughs> It's the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life. Well, it's just you, Gomez. It's just Saki. You'll be there, right? We'll be back after this. Now's my time. Now's my
got we got silly out in the hall before the show because I was looking at the tape uh, of the old Ed Sullivan show, and we started doing Ed Sullivan stories. And you know, you do Sullivan now, and a lot of the young people say, "What are you doing?" That's how quickly. Uh, hey, is quickly that that guy in that Billy Joel video? Because yeah. Billy used uh, Will Jordan, who right. was the first guy to do it. That's right. Strange. Doesn't last long, does it? That's why I think I really got into comedy. Was yeah. uh, uh, every Sunday night Sullivan would have different uh, types. Well, of Wayne Schuster. Yeah, I, I like the um, the older uh, the guys who are sort of Borscht Belty. I do a character named Buddy Young Jr., yeah. who's who's a guy who says, "Oh, Johnny, I tell you, don't get me started. This whole video cassette bit." You can buy them any place. No, they're in a dry cleaner. Hello, Ed, how are you? You can buy... No, it's true. My wife comes home from the gynecologist. She says, buddy, I got cystitis and Amadeus. <laughs> Wait. I said, is it serious? She said, parts of it, but the music is beautiful. I'll tell you that right <laughs> Don't crank me up, Ed. Don't start with me. <laughs> Whoopee. Movie, you, you got it, uh, called yes. uh, Running Scared. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yes. With Greg Hines? With Gregory Hines and myself. You know, uh, Gregory Hines, I've said this before, I've known him since about nine, he and his brother, not only a great dancer, but he's a very, very good actor. He's a wonderful actor, and he's one of the greatest people I've ever yeah. met in my life. But we, you play cops? We play undercover cops, very irreverent undercover cops. Um, we actually do our surveillance in a taxi cab because no one would think that's uh, what a police car would be. And it's a very funny story about these two cops who start to get afraid. Right. And they decide to retire young, open up a bar in Key West, Florida, and it's their last 30 days on a police force. They have to solve a murder smuggling case, trying everything they can do not to get hurt in that last Just 30 out, days. And, the, and of course, the more they try not to get hurt, the worse it happens. Okay, here's a film clip. This is a chase scene. We're um, chasing a smuggler, and we have what we think is a phony nun and a priest in the backseat, but the real nun and a priest, and it's a pretty exciting chase scene. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> My driving? Well, it's just that you get to do all the dangerous stuff and I get to parallel park. Great. Yeah. Hey, Father, you and your wife owe me twenty-eight fifty. <laughs> you and your wife. <laughs> yeah. There's uh, good stuff. Thank you. There seven is. weeks you said you seven weeks just on the chase. That stuff? We shot that on Sundays in Chicago. Four months Ooh. freezing cold. My nipples have been hard for like forget about it. <laughs> See, it's like so awkward. And um, and Peter Himes directed and he did a great job. It's a very exciting and very funny film at the same time. When that car got destroyed, I was thinking of the, the old movie The Bank Dick with W. C. Fields where there and he says this automobile is gonna have absolutely no resale value whatsoever. What's over, man? <laughs> you uh, you don't know much about guns though. I mean right? No, no, I'm I'm Jewish. We we tend to be furriers, not hunters. <laughs> What, is this a pelt? I didn't kill it. Um, <laughs> strap it to the front of my Seville, and we'll take it home. I, uh, no, the first day, I had to shoot a gun. I had practiced. Right. But as a kid, I practiced going with a stick, going bam, 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 bam. Sure. So now it's take one. Peter Himes goes, action. I burst through the door, bam, bam, kill the extra. And he goes, cut. And I go, it was good. And he goes, yeah, but fire the gun. Don't do you bam, 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 bam with your mouth. I'm still six years old. We'll be right back. Stay where you are. And uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger's here. <laughs> All right, my next guest. One, two, one, two. My next guest, uh, you all know, Arnold has won more bodybuilding awards than any anyone in the world. And uh, critics are saying some very nice things about his performance in his latest film called Raw Deal. Here is Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> you don't need that. Sorry about that. That's for the I take it you don't need that little step stool. No, 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 no. How are you? I am terrific, thank you. Last time I saw you, you were a single man. And That's now right. you are in the bonds of matrimony. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Yeah. I tell you. Thank you. 
English is a funny language. Yes. I tell you. He is Conan the Barbarian. He says two words, I do, and he becomes Arnold the Meek. You know? <laughs> It's, it's were you strange, nervous? Were you thing. nervous? We talked about. You said you were a little nervous before the wedding. How did things go? I was. I was nervous. Yes. I mean, I tried to come there. I remember I was filming in Mexico, in a jungle, and I was trying to fly up there with my jet to Hannesport and play really cool. Arrived there. Sure. Just a little thing that happens this weekend, you know. But the more I got into it, <laughs> the more nervous I got. Yeah. I tell you, it was. Yeah. It was an experience, yeah. but it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it very much. I always have. Yes. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One of those things you never forget. Um, no. you, had a, you, had a, you had a pretty good sized wedding, didn't you? I mean, a lot of guests. Oh yeah, so, around 450 or 500 people there. That's the problem. You see, did you ever think of eloping? I mean, to see that's not. Uh, no, I didn't think about it, yeah. but a lot of people suggested it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and it's quiet still of the night. You climb, old-fashioned, you climb a ladder up and you, you run That's off. That's right, you're gone, yeah. Yeah. The picture now, you, you just finished. I saw the critics described you as, uh, as you know, Stallone has got a picture out called Cobra, right? It's been open about, I guess, the same length as your picture, right? They referred to you, some critic, as the thinking man's Stallone. Have you and uh, have you and Stallone talked that over at all, or when you <laughs> when you get together, how do you handle that? Are, are you uh, friends with we, Stallone at all? Oh yes, we know each other very well, and he works out in the same gym sometimes than I do, and uh, uh, yeah, we know each other, but we don't hang out together. You don't have cookouts, or uh, no, 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 <laughs> none of those things. Uh, but uh, I was, I tell you, I was very fortunate and very lucky that uh, we did not put that much violence in our film. And I think this is what the critics really picked up on. It's, uh, they liked the humor in the film, and they liked the whole idea of making, uh, you know, a picture that has a certain sense of humor and where you make fun of yourself, and yeah. you tone down the violence, and you don't go that extreme with it. And I think that is what made it work, you know? And this is why it was uh, very successful at the box office, yeah. and that's why the critics liked it and so on. I have not seen Cobra yet, but one of the columnists in, I think, Los Angeles paper made a scorecard I think it's only 90 minutes long, uh, in, in Cobra I'm talking about, and there were 67 killings Ooh. in 90 minutes. Now What's that, the record? What? What's the record? I don't know, but I said... <laughs> that's a good question. I mean, that, that's almost outrageous to, in, in 90 minutes to kill 67 people. I, I, I don't, well, I don't quite uh, understand that's, that. That's why in, in, in a raw deal, you know, it's such a good mixture of a, of a great story and it's a good acting, great actors in it, with a great director, and it's a, it's a fantastic film. Yeah. You know, and that's why it does well. All right. You mentioned working out with uh, the same gym that uh, Stallone works out. Now, you do this every day. We've talked about this <clears> before. <throat> you, you've, got, you've got to keep pumping the iron. Fairly regularly. Oh, yeah, I work it every day in the morning. How, how long? Uh, I work it an hour a day in the morning, and I run at night or go bicycle riding and stuff like that. But uh, when you go on location, like I just finished a film uh, called Predator in Mexico, and uh, it was very tough because we worked around 14 hours a day in the jungle. It was really high humidity. It was very hot. And I, I really got dehydrated there because it was, it was just too much working out in the morning at 5 in the morning, then coming home at night around 8, and then going running and trying to stay in shape. So yeah, where's really your becomes... energy? Uh, it does not require a, a tremendous amount of discipline. Lots of people get on an exercise program, and they're great for the first four or five weeks, you know, and then they don't. They it's just so much it. part of my life, you know. Yeah. I mean, I, I was training and involved in sports when I was a little kid, and my right. father was uh, always disciplining us and training every day and yeah. exercising. So it's just I, part could, of your I life couldn't now. imagine to get up and not go to the gym. It's like breakfast, lunch, yeah. and dinner, or going to bed. You know? What's the myth about, they say, well, if bodybuilders quit working out, they just, they, they, they collapse. You hear that, you know, say, they work up the muscles, but if they stop, you ever thought what it would happen if you just give it up and... Well, first of all, I've never thought about it, but yeah. uh, uh, second of all, I've never stopped working out, so I couldn't tell you. But uh, one day when I come in here with a 100-pound body weight, then you know, uh, yeah. I stopped working out, yeah. maybe. No, you... I don't think that happens, because I see guys like Chuck LaLanne and... Well, you just got married. Yeah, you just you got know. married now. Do you exercise in your honeymoon? I mean, when you... I exercised in my honeymoon. As a matter of fact... Oh, come on. <laughs> Come on, a man's got to do what he's got to do. Come on. No, I didn't mean it that way, but you, you still... 
Um, and you travel with the gym wherever you was, go. It was funny because the, we made a reservation at a certain hotel and uh, they put our room uh, where I stayed was right above a gymnasium. And so I think the guy thought I would be working out every day, which I did. I, yeah. I still worked out because I was right in the middle of filming. Yeah. So I had to go back to Mexico still being in shape and not one out to right. by Maria, you know. Do you have to register your head as an offensive weapon? I, mean, <laughs> I guess guys do that in, in that kind of yeah. combat, right? Actually. It is, it's, it's a very tricky thing to do fight scenes in the film because everything is quite different than in reality. Right. Uh, you have to do much bigger movements did to you sell ever, the punch. Did you ever catch one when you're not supposed to? Oh, yes. I mean, you get hurt in those fight scenes all the time, you know, and uh, so you just have to watch and work it out and rehearse and uh, choreograph the fight scenes very well. But the stuntmen are really well trained for yeah. those things, yes. Yeah. Looks, looks good. Thank you, thank you. We'll take a break. Michael Amar is with us in just a moment. Okay, now for a little deception. My next guest. Uh, Michael Amar is here tonight. He's an extremely talented sleight of hand magician, the cur current parlor magician of the year at the Magic Castle in Hollywood, the fifth year he's, uh, consecutive uh, year he's won that award. He'll be in Houston, Texas at Magic Island, June 16th to the 21st, and, the, and at the Comedy Magic Club in Hermosa Beach, California, June the 24th. Would you welcome Michael Amar? I guess we can go ahead and go. Spectators. Well, terrific. What a crowd. Uh, a lot of people always ask me, do I do tricks or do I do illusions? So I thought I would give you an example of both, give you some idea, let you decide. Watch. Watch. <laughs> Watch. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, see, that's a trick. I tricked you. You thought I was going to do a trick with the ball. Okay, I'll do the illusion with the ball. So all I have to do is squeeze like this and it changes oh, into a scarf. See, that's an illusion because it seemed to melt into the scarf, okay? <clears throat> now, we're going to do magic. So I'm going to take this off. Don't want you to get confused when I say watch. <laughs> not that you would, not that anyone here would. But if I were really magic, I would produce meaningful things. Things like this. Ooh, no, no, fun. hold your applause. <laughs> <laughs> See, you're thinking, I have lemons like this. What's so special about this one? Well, that's a good question. This lemon is special because it becomes more and more important as the show goes on. Mm -hmm. For that reason, yeah, hang on to it. Just look okay? You're the guy that watches it. And also, <clears throat> since you... <laughs> Arling, is that your lemon? <laughs> I certainly hope so. I certainly <laughs> hope so. <laughs> so keep a good hold on to it. Oh, I got it. Now, having been a magician, by the yes. way, you know that magic's the perfect way to break the ice, mm -hmm. to meet people for the first time. Right. We've never met. We have met. Well, no? Who are you? Example. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, how are you? Good to see you. Say, you got a bill on you? This is the way you would break the ice. You got a bill on you? I'll show you a magic trick. A bill? A bill. A bill. Money? Oh. Don't get him upset, I'll tell you that right now. I'll give you a knock in the head, you wouldn't have I've seen his ass. Oh, he's got a head. This is oh, oh, boy. Boy. Oh. How much do you need? <laughs> So, uh, pick a bill. Yeah. Uh, how about this one? I'll take care. That's all you need? Yeah, I'll take care. And I'll take that. I'll take that. He's not expensive. Yeah. I hope you bought enough for everybody. <laughs> okay, I will take care. Uh, no, I meant to do that. <laughs> I meant to do that. Uh, receipt. Yeah, yeah, this will be a receipt, okay? This is... <laughs> It may be important as time goes on. Now, what I'll do... I only have 200 of those in my pocket. <laughs> and we'll get it right before the show is over. <laughs> hey, this is what people do. This is a good way to break the ice in a social situation. It has to Let's be broken. Yeah. Yes, the ice needs broken here. All you have to do, a lot of people, if you were to take a bill and hold it under the flame... Wait a minute, I worked for one minute in a movie. <laughs> here, I'll show you. Here, Johnny, go ahead. You do, do the honors for me. What do you want me to do? Yeah, see, if you hold the flame close to the bill, it seems as if it's going to light it, okay? Yeah. But don't hold it too. Hey, wait, hey, ow! Oh, Easy come, easy go, Arnold. <laughs> yeah, you got another hundred? <laughs> He's got the lighter, don't... <laughs> don't look at it. No, don't worry. 
We'll we'll deal with this. Mm. We'll deal with this. I'll take that. That's how I got it. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll show you something quick with a deck of cards. Whenever you hear of a magician, you think, oh, show me a card trick, or I'd hate to play cards with him. Mm -hmm. So let me quickly show you that all the cards, you know, are mixed. They're all different, mm -hmm. okay? Now, it doesn't matter which card we use. So, Billy, just name any card. Uh, Queen of Hearts. Okay, Queen of Hearts. What a coincidence. That's a, an often chosen card. Let me make sure that we have it in here. I don't necessarily so play with a full so, day. Well, I played it on soap, so I figured yeah. I... Just... Oh, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't get me. Yeah, don't get him started. All I, I should have known. All I have to do is wave my hand like this, and it changes visibly into Ooh, the card that you just that named, the Queen of Hearts. But I know you're thinking, what if I had selected something else? So I'll go through like this. Just touch any card. Just, just touch one. Boom. Just, Wait, this one? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to show it to everybody. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Don't worry, I'm going to deal with your 50 right after this. Okay? All you have to do is shuffle them in, <laughs> give the cards a cut. Now, whenever you cut a card, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of ways to interpret that. Okay? I, I could cut them differently. Does anybody here have a razor on them? Oh, yeah, all the time. I do. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do, I do. It was just recharging. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, see, it's electric. Almost oh, like that. Now, you can twist this, take out the blade, but don't touch both of those prongs at the same time. See, it could be dangerous. I'll go over here. <laughs> Take out the razor blade. Take out the razor blade. <laughs> All right. There's the razor blade. Okay. Double edge. Double edge. Okay, I'll place this inside next to the seven of spades. <laughs> no? I don't think that was the card. Well, I didn't say it was his card. I just... <laughs> <laughs> See, if I shake it, we'll find his card. Okay. It's passing through the deck now towards the ten of hearts. Just passing the ten of hearts. <laughs> Uh, you think I'm make, uh, making a joke. As it's passing through, I'll, I'll prove to you that I knew what I was doing because as it passed through the deck, it's taken every card, sliced it into <laughs> tiny little pieces except for one card and one card only. What was the name of your card? The five of Clubs. The five of Clubs? Perfect. Oh, wow. <laughs> I know you're thinking that's that's fine for the kids, but where's my 20? Okay, now I haven't forgotten. <laughs> I haven't forgotten. That's the reason that we have the limit here, because never let it be said that I would give you a raw deal. <laughs> Guy, if you'll do me a favor, cut it along here, cut it all the way around as if it had a core inside. Because this lemon does have a core. I knew it was 100 all along. I was laughing. They were laughing. I know you weren't laughing so much. <laughs> but I knew it was a $100 bill all along. In fact, inside the center of this bill is a $100 bill. Not just any $100 bill. It's a $100 bill that has a corner missing. And if you'll take the corner, prove without any shadow of a doubt, was that the $100 bill that you gave me? It sure is. Good to see you again. Good to see you. I, I hope your movie's a big hit for you, and I hope your marriage is a big hit for you. Thank you very I mean, much. Uh, Thank always you. good to see you. Uh, you. The movie is playing around the country. All over the country. Uh, and Billy will be appearing um, the June... So no, that's your picture, right? Your picture's the 27th of June. Right. And then Billy will be appearing at the Universal Amphitheater June 29th and 30th. Nice to see you. Good to and see you. And Michael will be disappearing. <laughs> <laughs> disappearing nightly. Disappearing nightly. <laughs> that would be a good opening. <laughs> disappearing be nightly. Good. Thanks for being with us. Good night. I'm humbled by that applause.